uh, with everybody. So we have started recording and uh, the Facebook Live is also going on. So I just wanted to uh, inform everybody about that. Uh, so uh, welcome again, everybody. And uh, uh, as all of you know, this is a presentation that is, uh, this is a webinar that will discuss uh, the uh, latest report by Manthan uh, on uh, the National Waterway 10, which is on the Amba River in Maharashtra. Uh, many of you would be aware that uh, Manthan has been looking, Manthan has been, of course, working on water and energy issues uh, since many years, uh, over the last two decades, uh, around at least. And uh, uh, over the last six, seven years, we have one of the focus themes of Manthan has been the national inland waterways because uh, this has got a very big push in 2016 with the passage of the National Inland Waterways Act. And because this uh, represents a very, very major push or a very major intervention, a very large intervention into India's rivers. Uh, uh, that could have a lot of implications uh, for uh, the riparian communities, for the fishing communities, and for the other people dependent on the rivers as well as the river ecology. So we have been studying this. And we have been studying not only the social and environmental impacts related to the development of inland waterways, and in particular, its impacts on the uh, river-dependent communities like fishing communities and others. But we have also been looking at some of the other larger issues like performance of national waterways. We have been looking at the viability issues. We have been also looking at who this program is likely to benefit, who this program is designed to benefit, whether it is going to benefit the local communities, the local, uh, the small traders, the people living on the banks of the rivers, or is it, uh, which is what appears right now, that it is uh, uh, targeted much more at the uh, large corporate users. And uh, the overall uh, uh, objective of study is, of course, to not only bring around these facts, with the help of many of the riparian uh, communities, with the help of the riparian communities uh, and uh, uh, other people uh, who are uh, being affected by the waterways, but also uh, uh, to see how the waterways can be developed because rivers have been used for uh, navigation since centuries and they would continue to be used. So how to develop this in a manner that uh, is sustainable ecologically, but also that it is benefiting the local communities. It is not adversely impacting the other communities like fishing communities, but on the contrary also benefits them. So this is the broad objective and uh, the uh, latest study, which is focused on the National Waterway AMBA, is also there with the same objective. And uh, uh, we will be uh, 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 we will be presenting all these aspects in that. Uh, the program for today's uh, uh, webinar will be, of course, after this introduction, we will have a presentation for about 15 minutes based on this report. That will be done by my colleague, Avli Verma. Avli has been... Uh, leading Manthan's work on inland waterways uh, for many years now. And uh, this is based, uh, uh, the, the presentation she'll be making, and of course the study is based not only on the uh, uh, study of the secondary documents and all other data, but also on the field uh, visits and interaction, uh, very intense interactions with the local communities. Uh, after that, we will have uh, two uh, key comments uh, around uh, 10 minutes each, uh, both by uh, members of the fishing community and uh, uh, fishing uh, 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 fish workers organizations. Uh, one will be by uh, Arun Shivkarji, who is from the Amba River Basin area. And the other one will be by Pradeep Chatterjee, who is the national convener for the uh, platform for small scale fish workers. I will introduce both of them just before in detail, just before they uh, come for their presentations. And after they, after these two small interventions, we will open up the uh, floor for discussions and comments and all that. I'm going to request, uh, since we are on a very tight schedule, we have only about an hour for the entire program. Uh, I'm going to request everybody, including the speakers and later on the people who ask questions and comments to be very, very, uh, uh, you know, to stick to the time and, uh, you know, so that we can have a larger participation. And uh, at the end, we will conclude uh, just by a few concluding remarks by, by me. Uh, so with that, uh, I will 
hand over to Avli, but before that, I will just want to request everybody who's uh, participating, kindly please keep yourself muted so that you know the uh, flow of the webinar is not uh, not disturbed. Uh, lastly, uh, I think Shukarji may be uh, speaking in Hindi. If he does that or in Marathi, whatever, then we will have a brief summary translation at the end. Otherwise, uh, we are having the proceedings in English. So uh, we will try and keep it that. We may not have time for too many translations. Uh, so thank you very much. And of course, any comments or anything you have, please place in the chat box. Thank you very much. And over to you, Abdi. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'll quickly try to share my screen and begin with the presentation. Okay, uh, is my screen visible? All right. Uh, so um, I think we have the context very well laid out. Um, I'll be uh, presenting on our latest report, Cargo and Consequences, which is a report on the social and environmental implications of shipping on Amba River, which is now National Waterway 10. Um, uh, so basically, in this presentation, I'll give a brief overview of the National Waterways Act coming to the National uh, Waterway Tents overview and the impacts of interventions and vessel movement carrying coal and iron ore on tidal waters and their impacts on the fisher folks and uh, ending it with a recommendation. Uh, so prior to uh, 2016, there were five national waterways uh, in India declared through separate acts in the parliament. But with National Waterways Act 2016, we now have 111 national waterways. Uh, these, uh, these, these were mainly pushed uh, as uh, an alternative transportation mode, uh, which are more environment friendly, cost, cost effective and sustainable for transportation of bulk and hazardous goods. Uh, but just uh, because they are claimed so, that doesn't mean that all the national waterways are uh, environment friendly, cost effective and sustainable and safe mode of transportation. National waterways, uh, conversion of rivers into navigable fairways, it requires a number of interventions. It requires a navigation channel which has to be of a certain depth and width uh, depending on the capacity of the vessel that you want to ply on the waterway. And it requires uh, interventions in the river, uh, like dredging, bundling, river straightening, all of which have environmental impacts. Uh, water availability is to be ensured for at least 300 days in the year and uh, associated infrastructure such as terminals, uh, storage facilities, approach roads, etc. Parking uh, for loading, unloading the cargo is also required, which also has their their all their their own uh, level of uh, social and environmental impacts but mainly the activity of dredging which is mainly excavating the river sediment to make it deeper and to create the channel and maintain it further uh, for transportation of uh, vessels uh, that is the uh, what one of the most uh, crucial activity which has severe environmental Im implications uh, the impacts include turbidity in the river noise impacts on riverine uh, morphology and ecology destruction of aquatic habitats impacting uh, fish uh, mortality, uh, as well as having impacts on the livelihood of fisher folks. Uh, these waterways have more serious impacts, which are uh, when when they are located in more eco sensitive regions and protected areas. Um, and uh, uh, what we'll see in this presentation is that much of the transportation on national waterways is basically on tidal waters, which are uh, by themselves the most uh, productive part of the uh, river ecosystem. Um, just uh, very briefly talking about the viability of the National Waterways Program and uh, reiterating the fact that most of this movement is in tidal waters uh, and in what many of the waterways which are operational, which were operational before 2016, which is the case with this uh, waterway as well, which is National Waterway 10. Uh, but many of the other national waterways are found non-viable. More than 50% of them are not viable for cargo, mainly because there is no depth or there is no cargo to, to be transported. But coming to, uh, to why we are speaking about National Waterway 10, we can see in this graph 
that most of the traffic on national waterways is coming from coastal shipping. All these three national waterways are basically uh, a very small stretch, small distance uh, stretches of uh, tidal waters, uh, which are contributing the most to the overall traffic on national waterways. National Waterway 10, uh, for example, uh, contributes around 23% of, contributed around 23% of all uh, traffic on national waterways in the last fiscal year. Uh, again, uh, to re reiterate the point, National Waterway 10 has been consistent uh, with its contribution, meaning that much of the cargo amongst the West Flowing River is being transported on the, uh, on the River Amba, uh, mainly on the stretch of its uh, 19 kilometer, which is the Dharamtar Creek. And, uh, as you can see with this graph, most of this commod uh, the cargo which are which is transported on National Waterway 10 consists of iron ore and coal. Uh, this is just a, a uh, map to show you the uh, situation uh, where uh, National Waterway 10 is located. You can see that it's very closely located to Mumbai Port Trust. Uh, a lot of its coal uh, cargo is now transported on National Waterway 10. Mainly imported coal and iron ore is transported through the sea trade. Uh, and then uh, inland it is transported uh, by transporting it into smaller vessels. Uh, although these are like big vessels of 2,000 to 8,000 ton ca capacity, but uh, they are uh, then uh, transported through the inland waterway route, route of 19 kilometer stretch on Amba River. So you can see here most, mostly all this cargo is being transported uh, for the uh, uh, Jinder Steelworks uh, plants, which are located in Raigad. Uh, and uh, opposite to that, you can see here is the PNP port, uh, which basically handles coal to be transported to mainly to thermal power plants. But other than uh, that, most of the coal and iron ore, which is coming, uh, on National Waterway 10, which you can see with this graph also, most of it is for JSW, uh, very little in the last uh, fiscal year, we can see for um, uh, PNP. Uh, even in this share of uh, cargo, you, uh, JSW has bought around 50% stakes, even in this uh, uh, PNP maritime port. So in this 19 kilometer stretch, uh, at present, around uh, 39 barges move daily, uh, which are of capacity 2,000 to 8,000 tons. And by 2053, according to the documents of IWAI, this traffic is expected uh, to be 116 metric tons. Uh, at present, it is around 28, 29 metric tons. By 2053, it is going to be 11, 116 metric tons. And around 167 vessels would be moving, would have to move here to attain this traffic. And most of it is going to be coal and iron ore again. Uh, when we visited the uh, Amba waterway, we saw the coal dust uh, on the river, on the estuary. Most of it, as, as I explained, uh, it is imported coal, which is used by JSW for steel production, and imported thermal coal, uh, which is used by power plants situated in Maharashtra and uh, Madhya Pradesh. So mainly the Mumbai Port Trust is banned from coal handling due to environmental impacts. There was a Bombay High Court uh, order which uh, resulted in this uh, shift. Uh, but the order came mainly because of the impact it was having on mangroves, uh, health hazard to the people of Bombay and also because of air pollution related hazards. But the question remains that when, when all this handling is uh, now transferred to uh, Dharamtar Creek, uh, have the impacts also not transferred from Mumbai to Dharamtar? And you can see in this picture how this coal is transported. And this is a continuous activity which you see when you visit this river. There are many impacts on the fisher folks. We spoke to them and maybe Arun Shivkarji, Govardhan Patilji here. They can maybe like uh, explain more, more on this. But what we have noted in our report is that 
uh, although they, there is a vibrant fishing activity in the creek, the DPRs, which are recently prepared by IWAI for further development of uh, this National Waterway 10, it says that inland fishing activity does not take place in Amba River. And mainly they say that uh, because they're handling, and they uh, mention it in their DPR, that because they're handling dirty cargo, which is coal, uh, uh, encouraging fishing activity here may not also prove fruitful. Uh, fisher people uh, with whom we spoke to, they also uh, spoke about the loss in fish diversity because of these interventions. Although in some documents we found that if, uh, that it was accepted that many of the fisher folks uh, present in the Dharamta Creek, they are dependent on fishing in this creek. And we saw like a lot of uh, different ways in which fishing, fishing activities was going on in the creek uh, in November 2023. Uh, to maintain this uh, waterway, dredging is to be done almost on a regular basis. It is to be dredging is to be ensured uh, to maintain a channel of around 5.5 meter depth and 110 meter uh, wide navigation channel. Uh, and uh, Fisher people basically says that most of the dredging activity, which is almost like a continuous sort of sort of an activity, it it has contributed uh, the most to the loss of fish population here. Not only that, uh, uh, dredging is also known to disperse uh, settled pollutants in within the river. It impacts aquatic habitats, breeding, nesting, and hiding spaces of the fishes. Uh, on top of that, disposal of dredged material is some, something that, uh, again, fisher folks there spoke and uh, complained that uh, dredged material is often disposed not in the uh, place designated for it, but on the mangroves and sometimes within the creek itself to save the fuel. If you can see here, uh, this is a quote which basically explains how they now there there are around eight thousand tons uh, of vessels, capacity vessels, which are now plying introduced in the uh, river for mainly JSW, uh, by JSW, and uh, for that the depth of the creek has to be increased, and this increase in depth has le led to many impacts. But on top of that, uh, they have also increased the speed at which the barges are entering the creek now. Uh, uh, one, one fisher folk says that earlier it used to be three hours, but now it covers the same distance in one hour. So they were asking like how fishes will be in the creek. There are also impacts on uh, agriculture. Uh, dredging and movement of barges have also affected agriculture and mangroves in the area. Uh, the car bandisti uh, buns, which are there to protect agricultural fields from brackish water of the Amba River, uh, they are basically uh, broken because of uh, of increased movement of vessels. And there is also increase in the salt uh, level in the salinity in the land in the vicinity of this creek. Another thing that we noticed that the navigation, the barges are only allowed to uh, transport or move within the navigation channel. But we, what we noticed is that there was uh, anchoring of barges beyond the navigation channel, which was further restricting the fishing area and also impacting the fishing activities. Uh, not only were they, they were in violation of the environmental uh, safeguards, but also on top of that, on these anchored barges, which are basically a violation, there were also uh, a, a industrial police, which was there to protect these barges. We, uh, uh, very recently, we, we saw this accident taking place in Sahib Ganj, where a big, big vessel hit three small boats in Ganga, which led to damages of the boats, of the small boats, as well as led to uh, injuries to the uh, small boat people. Uh, and similar sort of uh, concern is there with this waterway, with the increased traffic of barges and fishing vessels, both plying in the same uh, stretch of the river. There needs, a, needs to be a robust system to manage the river traffic. Uh, which also considers the speed, uh, the needs of smaller fishing boats and ensure space, access and safety for them. So on basis of that, uh, it, it, there, there needs to be a extensive and independent environment impact assessment that 
covers all aspects of Amba River's uh, uh, development, including the impacts of dredging cargo movement in port expansions on the river ecology, aquatic species, local communities, especially the fisher folks. And this assessment need to involve uh, uh, local fisher folks, and it needs to be conducted with more transparency. Uh, because there is already vibrant fishing activity uh, in the creek, within the creek, there needs to be accurate documentation uh, and there has to be monitoring and regulation of dredging activities uh, plus responsible disposal of dredged material. Uh, Fisher folks uh, especially uh, uh, spoke about the uh, impacts due to increased vessel capacity. So there has to be some limitation on what how much tonnage of capacity is viable for this river stretch and what should be the speed and safety mechanisms for uh, the same. And also the anchoring regulations should be strictly enforced and there needs to be a periodic review and adaptation. And most importantly, there needs to be more community engagement and consultation. Uh, you can read more about uh, this report and we can hear more on these impacts uh, from our uh, other uh, uh, speakers in this webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Avli. I think that was a very good summary uh, of the entire report as well as our findings. But I think we will hear much more also from Arun Shivkarji, who is our next speaker. And uh, he is himself uh, from the fishing community and from that area. And uh, he has been one of the persons because of whom we could learn so much about both the river as well as the waterway. So I will first introduce uh, Arun Shivkarji and then uh, I request him to unmute and speak. So Arun Shivkarji is an activist uh, who is with the Dharamtar Khadi Bachao Kriti Samiti. And he has been working since several decades with the fishing and tribal communities uh, communities in Maharashtra's Raigad district, uh, which is a coastal district. His involvement with the Dharamtar Khadi Bachao Kriti Samiti revolves around raising awareness, mobilizing locals to resist the corporate encroachment into Dharamtar Creek, about which a little bit we heard. Uh, he has shed light on the detrimental effects of barge movements and dredging on the creek's mangroves, agriculture and fishing industry. Uh, currently, he is based in the Pain Taluka within the Raigad district, and he is continuing his efforts to protect the Dharamtar Creek and its surrounding communities. He is extremely knowledgeable about the area as well as the uh, kind of impacts that various interventions, including the navigation, has had. So, uh, Shukarji, you uh, uh, unmute karke, apna, apni baat shuru kariye. Das minute mein aap please uh, this uh, khatam kariyega. Then, thoda sa discussion mein hum aur usko le sakenge. And Shukarji, you aap shayad Hindi mein baat rakhenge, to thoda sa uska baad mein summary kar denge. Sir, Hindi mein baat Hindi After he finishes his presentation, we'll have a short summary of that uh, in a few lines by my colleague Yashita. Okay. Uh, okay. Pehla, main apna jo kuch apna report banana, na, wo kafi acha hai. Aur ye Dharamtar Creek ke baare mein jo kuch bhi achhi parasiti hai, jo ye report mein bahut achhe dhang se dikhai di hai. Actually, यहाँ पहले इस बात थी बाद में JSWI उसके साथ साथ PNP आई है और दोनों कंपनी के जो बार्जेस का असर आज यहाँ पूरे खाड़ी क्षेत्र में हो रहा है खाड़ी क्षेत्र में मछुआरों के साथ जैसा नुकसानी का संबंध आता है वैसा खेती का भी संबंध है जो आज इस जलमार्ग जाने नेविगेशन चैनल जो है वो एक्चुअली 135 मीटर का है और जो जलमार्ग है जो जलमार्ग क्रमांक 10 जो अपन बोलते हैं उसमें जो कुछ सुविधा है वो सुविधा के बारे में अगर देखेंगे तो पर्यावरण का काफी नुकसान ही वहाँ यहाँ हो रहा है यहाँ 39 बार्जेस जैसे इन्होंने बोला कि आ रहे आज के जा रहे और वो पूरे जलमार्ग से आते होते यहां की पूरी जन समुदाय है वो जन समुदाय के ऊपर काफी असर आज हो रहा है खाड़ी क्षेत्र में जो हाई टाइट और लो टाइट का असर जो हो रहा है ताकि इसमें से सी कल्चर और मरीन कल्चर उसमें की जो कुछ भी प्रजनन व्यवस्था जो है वो पूरी बाद हो रही है 
ये उसके कारण जैसे कि यहाँ की जो मैंग्रोव है किनारे के जो मैंग्रोव है आज काफी ढंग से किनारे की तरफ आप देखेंगे तो काफी मैंग्रज है आज ये पूरा डीप फिश ये करने के कारण ड्रेजिंग करने के कारण आज उसमें खोला ही है जो को डीप जाने के कारण बाजू के किनारे किनारे के जो कुछ मैंग्रोज है आज खाड़ी क्षेत्र में जा रहे हैं और उसका असर उसके बाजू में रहने वाले खेती के संरक्षण के लिए रहने वाले जो हम लोग बाहर काटा बोलते हैं उसके उसको उसके ऊपर होता है और उसके कारण आज की परिस्थिति ऐसी है कि वहां के करीबन दो किनारे के पचास हजार एकड़ लैंड जो कि किसानों की लैंड आज धोखे में है उसमें से भी आज की परिस्थिति वहां देखेंगे तो कुछ दस हजार एकड़ में खारा पानी घुस रहा है घुसे उसका असर काफी ढंग से हो रहा है ये जो खाड़ी क्षेत्र है रेवस से नागोटना तक फोर्टी फाइव किलोमीटर का ये है ये रेवस से जे जे डब्ल्यू तक 19 किलोमीटर की जो बार्जेस आ रहे हैं आज की स्थिति में पीएनपी और उनकी जे डब्ल्यू की और आज हमको ऐसा समझ रहा है कि यहाँ अदानी के भी कुछ परिस्थिति इधर आ रही है अदानी अदानी का भी अगर यहाँ का जेटी बंद रहेंगी इनका दोनों का जेटी बंद रहेंगी उन थर्टी नाइन बार्जेस अगर आएंगे और वो बार्जेस अगर बढ़ जाएंगे तो आज की परिस्थिति में काफी असर यहाँ होने वाला है उसमें से मच्छी की जो पैदाश है जो खार पुटी जो बोलते हैं मैंग्रोव है और खेती के नुकसान हो रहे हैं वो काफी ढंग से हो रही है इसके लिए हम लोग ये सोच रहे थे कि और ये रिपोर्ट में ये भी ऐसा हमको समझ गया है कि यहाँ मछुआरे ही नहीं ऐसा अगर ये रिपोर्ट में है तो हम ये सोचते है कि मेरी टाइम बोर्ड मत्स्य खाते जो है वो और बैंक लोन के लिए हम लोग किसा लिया है कलेक्टर के पास हमारा तो बूथ है मत्स्य मत्स्य का जो हमारा मत्स्य संस्था जो है ये पूरा संस्था का अगर आज देखेंगे तो करीबन चार हजार बोट जो हमारे छोटे छोटे बोट या है ये वो आज हमारे खाड़ी में कर रहे हैं जो मछुआरी कर रहे हैं अभी 2014 का जैसे कि यहाँ बताया कि उच्च न्यायालय ने जो उसका आदेश देने के कारण वहां का कोयला आज मुंबई का कोयला अगर यहाँ आ रहा है तो उसका भी काफी असर हो रहा है वो कोयला भी पूरे क्रिक में रहता है या यहाँ का जेटी पे जो कुछ आयरन है वो नीचू गिरता है उसका भी काफी असर आज उसमें होता है आज यहाँ दो हजार एकड़ से आठ टन का जो बार्जेस यहाँ आ रहा है वो काफी असर यहाँ हो रहा है इसलिए यहाँ का जो परिस्थिति है जो परिस्थिति आज की आज की स्थिति में काफी नुकसानदायक है और नुकसानदायक होने से कारण यहाँ के मछुआरों के ऊपर बहुत अच्छा असर हो रहा है तो ये हम लोग सोच रहे हैं कि जो ड्रेजिंग जो हो रही है वो ड्रेजिंग का जो कुछ नियम है जो कुछ रिखा है गवर्नमेंट ने दिया है तो वो ड्रेजिंग निकालने के बाद उसकी विल्ले वाट जाने वो किधर डालने का है तो उसके ऊपर उन्होंने कानून दिया है कि ये पूरा निकालना है तो बाजू में जाके रखो यही ठेकेदार उधर ही उसमें रखते हैं कभी कभी इसका असर ऐसा होता है कि जब इनके कंपनी के स्पीड बोट जब आते हैं तो स्पीड को स्पीड बोट का ही एक्सीडेंट हो रहा है कभी कभी हमारे मछुआरे के जहाज जब जाते बोट जाते हैं उसके ऊपर भी कभी एक्सीडेंट होता है तीसरी बात यहाँ का जो 8000 2000 टन का जो बार्जेस आ रहा है उसका जो नीचू का जो फैन है वो फैन भी इतनी उसका आवाज इतना आता है कि वो मछुआरे कुछ निकल निकलते ही नहीं दूसरी बात यह है कि जब अपन ड्रेसिंग कर रहे हैं वो ड्रेसिंग का इसका असर ऐसा होता है कि उसका जो मलवा निकलता है वो मलवा अब जो दोनों किनारे की तरफ मछुआरे के छुपने की जो जगह है वो छुपने की जगह आज पैक हो रही है इसलिए मछुए को कहाँ रहने का वो भी सवाल नहीं आता है तीसरी बात मैंग्रोज जब कम होते जाते हैं हम ये मानते हैं कि मैंग्रोज ये प्रजनन व्यवस्था निर्माण करने वाली एक स्थिति है वो वो भी आज नष्ट हो रही है इसलिए ये पूरे खाड़ी में देखा अगर देखेंगे तो ये ड्रेजिंग ड्रेजिंग की वजह से ये बार्जेस की वजह से और ये कंपनी के ये जो माल कमा रहे हैं निकाल रहे हैं उसकी वजह से आज काफी असर हो रहा है मछुआरों के ऊपर आज चार हजार मछुआरों का जैसा हो रहा है वैसा खेती का पचास एकड़ में अगर जाए देखेंगे तो करीबन बीस या पच्चीस किसानों के ऊपर आज डेंजर परिस्थिति आ रही है तो दो हिस्से में है यहाँ का 
रेवस से जेएसडब्ल्यू तक 19 किलोमीटर का जो बारिजेस आते हैं वो एक और जेटी के बाद नागोटना तक वो 25 किलोमीटर का डिस्टेंस है वहां का एक दे नेविगेशन चैनल 19 किलोमीटर तक 135 का दिया और आगे का जो कुछ है लेकिन ड्रेजिंग ये 19 किलोमीटर के रेवस टू जे के यहाँ जो ज्यादा करने की वजह से ऊपर के हिस्से में जो करंट जो बढ़ रहा है वो करंट का इतना फास्ट करंट है कि ऊपर के हिस्से में जितने भी हमारे इस खेती की रक्षा करने वाले जो कुछ आउट बंड है वो टूट रहे और टूट रहने के कारण कुछ जगह खारा पानी जैसे है जैसे कि यहाँ के माचेला चिरबी ये गांव है जुया बस घानी गांव है सत्ताईस एकड़ में आज छह छह साल पानी खारा पानी आ जाए ये परिस्थिति सेम भाल का शिकार गांव है उधर भी हो रही है यानी मछुआरों के ऊपर जैसा असर हो रहा है वैसा ही असर किसानों के ऊपर हो रहा है तीसरी बात ये लोग उसका जो पर्यावरण का बात है वो जो प्रदूषण का बात है वो भी काफी ढंग से यहाँ है यानी हवा के दिशा से ये पर्यावरण स्थिति है कि यहाँ की जो हवा है पूर्व पश्चिम दक्षिण उत्तर ऐसी दो सब शाम घूमती रहती है और उसी तरह का यहाँ का पर्यावरण यानी यहाँ का प्रदूषण भी बढ़ते जा रहा है इसलिए ये कंपनी आने की वजह से हम लोग काफी सुखी थे काफी अच्छे ढंग से रहते थे हमारा ये पचास हजार एकड़ में कि किसान बहुत अच्छे ढंग से रहने वाला था आज ये दो, 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 दो सोचते हैं कि ये बारजेस की वजह से कंपनी आई कंपनी के वजह से यहाँ के लोकल को कुछ काम मिला ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं बल्कि हमारे नुकसान हो रहे इसलिए यहाँ के किना खाड़ी क्षेत्र में अंबा रिवर में जो कुछ हमारे सालों से काम करने वाले ये है मछुआरे है उनके ऊपर काफी असर हो रहा है और ये सोच के हम लोग देखते हैं कि अभी उसके ऊपर क्या करना चाहिए आज हमारा ये भी तय है कि जैसे कि हमने लोक संगठन की तौर से इनके खिलाफ आंदोलन किया है इनके खिलाफ आंदोलन करके कलेक्टर के साथ सब इधर किया है वोट रोको किया ये करने के बाद गवर्नमेंट अभी सोच रही है कि इसके ऊपर क्या करना है लेकिन हम ये मानते हैं कि ये बड़े लोगों का ऊपर तक इतना यह है संबंध है कि ये किसानों को या मछुआरों को कोई मानते ही नहीं लेकिन हम लोग रुकने वाले नहीं हम लोग इसके खिलाफ भी चार्ज करने वाले लड़ाई अभी जैसे कि इनके बारजेस है एक पॉइंट है कि बारजेस के जहां जहां हमारी मच्छी ज्यादा आ रही है वो बारजेस के ठिकाने ही इनका एंकर रहता है यानी हमको किसी भी तरह से मछली मिलना नहीं चाहिए ऐसी बुरी चोच है पहले यहाँ हमारे यहाँ तीस चालीस वेराइटी थी आज उनमें से दस या पांच ही वेराइटी आज मिल रही है पहले का यहाँ पाला जा, पाला करके एक मच्छी था काफी कीमत देने वाला मच्छी था वो भी आज भाग रहे हैं यहाँ का जिताड़ा जो जिताड़ा एक एक पांच सौ पांच रुपए के से चलता है वो भी जिताड़ा आज नष्ट हो रहा है यानी अच्छी मच्छी यहाँ खाड़ी क्षेत्र में आने वाली मच्छी भी ये ड्रेजर की वजह से बारजस की वजह से ये पूरी खत्म हो रही है यानी मछुआरों के ऊपर भी जैसा असर हो रहा है जैसा किसानों के ऊपर भी असर हो रहा है और ये हम पर्यावरण का जो नष्ट हो रही है वो भी सोचना चाहिए तीसरी बात ये यहाँ की खाड़ी क्षेत्र है कुछ जगह आड़ा शिवकर जी आप मिनट डेढ़ मिनट में प्लीज खत्म करिए थैंक यू हाँ बोलिए सर एक एक मिनट डेढ़ मिनट में आप थोड़ा सा उसको खत्म करिए फिर क्वेश्चन आंसर्स में और आप जोड़ सकते हैं आप पूरा कर दीजिए जो बोल रहे हैं एक हाथ दो एक मिनट डेढ़ मिनट और ले लीजिए कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है पूरा कर दीजिए आप म्यूट पे है आप म्यूट पे है आप म्यूट म्यूटेड है आप म्यूटेड है आपको अनम्यूट करना होगा बोलने के लिए हाँ बोलिए आप बोलिए हाँ सर तो अभी हम लोग ये सोच रहे हैं कि पूरे अभी नौ संगठन यहाँ इकट्ठा होके जो अभी का जो रिपोर्ट बनाया ताकि उसमें से हमको काफी आइडिया मिला कुछ हमारे जानकारी नहीं थी वो भी मिल रहा है जैसे कि ये अदानी आ रहा है अदानी का वो बारजेस अगर आ रहा है 
और भी अगर रिलायंस भी आएंगे आगे से तो ये भी कुछ सोच होनी चाहिए हमारे यहाँ की जो कुछ खाड़ी क्षेत्र की चौड़ाई है जो अढ़ाई से तीन मीटर और कुछ जगह पांच मीटर है ये 8000 टन का जो कुछ बार्जेस यहाँ आते हैं वो उसमें जो कुछ परमिशन दी है रे, मेरे, मेरे टाइम बोर्ड ने वो पक्की गलत है वो देना ही नहीं चाहिए तो कि उसके लिए अब आज का वो असर जो हो रहा है बाजू के बंट टूट रहे हैं वो असर कर रहे हैं तो पहले यहाँ का इस्पात थी इस्पात की वजह से ज्यादा से ज्यादा 2000 टन का बाईस सौ टन का आ रहा था इतना कुछ मुसीबत नहीं रहती थी कुछ इतना असर नहीं ले। लेकिन आज ये जे बड़े बड़े बार्जेस जैसे 8000 टन के अगर बार्जेस ला रहे हैं तो उसका काफी असर होने वाला है और इसके खिलाफ हमको कुछ ना कुछ करना चाहिए इसलिए ये आज के रिपोर्ट में जो कुछ बताया है वो बताया काफी अच्छा है हमने थोड़ा हमारा भी आंदोलन हर जगह चलता है इसलिए मैं जो कुछ भी पढ़ा है उतना ये किया है और उनके और भी जानकारी हम चाहते हैं कि मिलेगा तो हम इसके लिए सपोर्ट करेंगे क्योंकि ये कुछ ना कुछ गलत हो रहा है धन्यवाद सर बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद शिवकर जी और चर्चा में हम आपसे और थोड़ा बहुत सुनेंगे तुषार कैन यू प्लीज क्विकली समराइज इन वन और टू मिनट हिज मेन पॉइंट थैंक यू yeah hello yes just for the benefit of our non hindi speakers uh, <clears throat> this is not a literal translation but just a, a summary is a translation so basically arun shukar ji he started say uh, uh, he started uh, saying the uh, the work that manthan appreciated the work that manthan has done and the uh, in highlighting the concerns of the dharamta uh, dharanta creek and the fisher people around then he also uh, Uh, added that uh, the barge movement is not only impacting the uh, fisher people and the uh, fishing activities but also it has a, a wide range of acts on the mangroves and also on the agriculture uh, around the dharamtar creek so <clears throat> said that uh, about the mangroves when barges are plying on the uh, creek water the uh, it 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 induces a bank erosion and bank in, uh, erosion so basically so the, there is a car, carbon dioxide ban, uh, band uh, they call uh, locally it is known as carbon dioxide band it is a bank erosion which protects the brackish water uh, from entering the uh, the agricultural fields and how uh, because of the uh, the wave movement that barges are creating those uh, carbon dioxide bands are getting breached then he also uh, uh, he also added that uh, he, they were not aware that adani uh, adani is also coming but now with the adani's proposed jet t and plant uh, they were worried that these problems will exacerbate and uh, yeah and they were they were also appalled to hear that you know the, the ep the dpr and also the environmental clearance uh, uh, that was uh, submitted by adani for its uh, proposed jet t and all uh it, it uh, they basically they are negating the uh, existence of fisher people itself and then he also talked about the pollution from the coal dust and then disposal of dredge material so he also uh, said that uh, mostly the contractor uh, like the, they are supposed to uh, dispose the dredge material in the deep sea and uh, but contractor they, they are not adhering to the Uh, rules of the Maharashtra Maritime Board and boats and th- just to avoid the uh, diesel, uh, uh, just to save the diesel, they are just uh, dumping the disposal material in the uh, middle of the creek. So <clears throat> also uh, he he added that fifty thousand acres of land and twenty thousand uh, farmers are getting impacted due to the barge movement and twenty seven hundred of acres, twenty seven hundred acres of land is uh, already submerged. so uh, they are also uh, he also said that uh, you know this uh, jsw and pnp they are claiming that locals are getting employment uh, due to the uh, this factories but uh, they are not at all acknowledging the uh, the impact it is creating on the traditional fisher people on on the agriculture and also on the mangroves so uh, he then also enumerated the the diversity of uh, the re- re- reduction in diversity of the fishes that you know the local locally available fishes like jitada and pala uh, they are not, now uh, they are not finding it so, so sure you will have to yeah. you will have to summarize in another one more minute yeah yeah okay i'm done okay you're done okay thank you
Uh, so, uh, thank you, Tushar, for that quick summary. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Shivkaji's presentation had many, the whole richness, but we have just tried to capture the key points. Uh, Tushar also, incidentally, is one of the co-authors of this report, which we have released. He's a part of the Manthan team working on inland waterways. We will uh, now have uh, Pradeep uh, Chatterjee uh, coming in with his comments and uh, uh, insights. Uh, so uh, let me just quickly introduce uh, Pradeep Da. So uh, Pradeep Chatterjee uh, is the national convener of the National Platform for Small Scale uh, Fish Workers. Uh, he's based in West Bengal. Uh, he has uh, been working uh, with the you know small scale fish workers for more than 25 years. He has worked extensively on both coastal and inland fisheries uh, on the issue of protection of the social environment, sustainability, uh, and also for the interests of the small scale fishers. Uh, in particular, over the last few years, he has also been uh, working involved with a lot of work on the impacts of the inland navigation, uh, especially when there has been uh, accidents with fly ash, with barges carrying fly ash, uh, which have sunk into the, uh, you know, uh, water um, uh, waterways and uh, uh, he has been working on that and all other related issues. Uh, so he has been looking at the uh, issues and impacts of inland waterways uh, also particularly in the last uh, uh, few years much more actively. Uh, the National Platform for Small Scale Fish Workers is actually a very important voice that is uh, bringing out the uh, voices of the small scale fishers uh, not just in India, but uh, part of a whole global network. So with that brief introduction, I will uh, call on Pradeep Da to uh, uh, please come in and make his presentation. I request you to uh, do it in 10 minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sripad. <coughs> do you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, you uh, so yes, okay. yes, we can hear you. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> And uh, good afternoon to everybody. The presentation of Abli was wonderful, enlightening. And also, you know, the uh, report we got from uh, Arun uh, Shikharji is actually uh, also very, very uh, enlightening. And uh, uh, it actually reminds me of our situation in the inland waterways number one. Uh, Holdia, Ilahabad, and also the Indo-Bangladesh Protocol route, which goes from uh, Kolkata to uh, yeah, uh, Bangladesh through uh, Sundarbans. So <clears throat> the problems are almost the same. Everywhere, you know, the waterways actually affect the fisheries and also the embankments, mangroves, everything. So uh, because it affects the uh, natural environment. And uh, the fishing communities, especially the small scale fishing communities are the worst sufferers because they, their livelihood is, livelihood is on water. Uh, so if there is no fish, if the fish stock is affected, they lose their livelihood. So that is it. Uh, the question I would ask to Arun uh, Shekharji also that what kind of nets they use because the picture, only one picture was presented here. Uh, in Avli's presentation, there is, uh, I think that it is floating gill net. Uh, it is floating gill net that they use. And uh, one of the problems uh, here also in inland waterways number one, uh, the fishers use floating gill nets. And the problem with floating gill nets is this, that it entangles uh, in the uh, entangles with the uh, propellers, with the anchors uh, of the barges and ships. And that and those are damaged, so uh, that is a regular hazard here. So uh, and also I would actually uh, like to mention one very fundamental point that the small scale fishers have no right on the water, on the water on which they earn their their livelihood, and it is true for all kinds of fisheries in our country, uh, be it marine fisheries, be it river fisheries, be it actually uh, wetland fisheries, it, nowhere the fishers have any legal right on, on the water bodies or fish resources from which they earn their livelihood. So that is a, actually a very fundamental problem we are facing. Government is actually imposing waterways 
on the uh, on the fishers on their fishing grounds without without even informing the fishers let alone consulting with them so that is the problem this cannot happen in in the agricultural side you know if the government try, wants to actually uh, get some land for some project or anything they have to give a notice they have to have a calculation for compensation uh, and also they cannot do it by the 2013 law that they cannot do it if there is uh, less than 80 percent uh, consent 80 percent farmers consent uh, for any private uh, scheme private project or even if if there is less than 60 percent uh, if there is any government project so that is that is uh, the legality of the thing uh, we should fight for the right of the uh, fishers on the water bodies and it is one of the main campaigns that NPSSFW is trying to launch. But then uh, actually, you know, uh, what we had done here in uh, Inland Waterways 1, we moved the NGT, National Green Tribunal, because there were accidents. Uh, many barges capsized there on the, on the water and you know that in the, in the river, and it was a tremendous hazard, a permanent hazard for the fishers. Their nets entangled with the submerged structures and uh, they were torn, they were damaged. And also their navigation routes were actually blocked by this uh, yeah, fishing grounds were blocked by these submerged structures. And these, uh, the, these are very common things, you know, the accidents, the barges running over our nets, running over the boats of the uh, small, smaller boats. So, what we did, we moved the NGT, and the result was that uh, last year, in February, the NGT came out with the final verdict. Uh, NGT actually asked the uh, yeah, uh, Inland Waterways Authority to come up with a standard operating practice. The draft standard operating practice they developed and submitted. We commented on that. And the NGT order was that, that within two months, this should be finalized. Ah, but you know that February 23, after February 23, it is April 24, but nothing has come out of that. We are again moving the NGT. So that is the outcome. But through this, the authorities were alarmed. There were less accidents, accidents, number of accidents came down. And also another thing we tried, we tried direct ground act, ground level action. Whenever a barge or ship damaged our boats, small fishers boats or nets, the barge or ship was encircled. These are encircled by the small boats. And they would not allow, the fishers would not allow the barge to move on unless and until they paid compensation for their boats or nets. So this practice has now become prevalent so much so that the barges readily give some compensation. Huh. <laughs> they try to avoid the delay because if there is delay, uh, they loss, uh, their loss uh, becomes huge. So that is our, uh, that was our tactics. And also, but, but so far I tell you, uh, the main problems are there the barges and ships are plying uh, and they are in the, this case they are actually carrying coal in our case they are carrying mostly fly ash and it is very toxic you know so my advice to this uh, amba river fishers will be this that actually there should be a survey uh, immediate there should be a survey as is proposed by avli in, in her presentation uh, survey regarding the number of fishers uh, active on the river and the problems they are facing, recurrence of the problem, recurrence of the problems, and also immediately we should start lodging complaints to the authorities, not so much for some uh, redressal uh, as for record, as much as for record, because record will be very important if we go into further action, further legal action or administrative action. So that is very, very important. And also we should go for legal action. Uh, and before legal action, I actually suggest testing the 
fishes the fish uh, fishes of the of the area because when coal is spilled there you know there there will be i think mercury contamination and methyl mercury actually we should test for methyl mercury particularly and also for other chemicals we can test but methyl mercury is very very important uh, for this we tested this here in sundarbans areas and we found that the methyl mercury found in the fish species there were three times the per permissible limit of who human uh, world health organization so that is also very important for further litigations and uh, moving for the public health authorities etc but the main thing is is that the fishers should be organized should get organized and there should be ground level resistance and that is very very important i tell you that and npssfw actually will be man very happy to help the fishing communities there uh, in their struggle with our experience and also we can help them to get organized they should they should be organized as one and they should unite and give their united trust uh, against this this thing this uh, inland waterways that is affecting their livelihood so that is my my suggestion thank you uh thank you thank you very much uh, pradeep da i think that was a very very good presentation which not just talked about the problems but actually also showed how the organization how the fisher people can get organized and do very strong actions uh, and those actions are showing results so i think this is very good aur aapne jo kaha khas karke aapne jo कहा कि आप भी जो है वहां अंबा में और उस एरिया में जाके वहां के जो मछुआरा कम्युनिटी है उनके साथ बैठ के आपके टैक्टिक्स जो है आपने संगठन कैसा बनाया और किस तरह से आपने वहां पर जो है प्रोटेस्ट एक्शन किए हैं वहां पर आपने किस तरह से विरोध किया है और किस तरह से उस एक्शन का परिणाम हुआ ये आप शेयर करने को तैयार है तो मुझे लगता है ये बहुत अच्छी बात है ये इस पूरे चीज को आगे हमको बढ़ाना चाहिए एक दूसरे से सीखना चाहिए सो आई थिंक वी हैव हैड अ वेरी रिच काइंड ऑफ सेट ऑफ शेयरिंग ऑफ एक्सपीरियंसेस वी आल्सो हैव मेनी अदर वेरी नॉलेजेबल पीपल वी हैव आल्सो अदर पीपल फ्रॉम द एरिया नंद कुमार वी हैव गोवर्धन पाटिल जी है वी हैव नंद कुमार पवार फ्रॉम दैट एरिया बोथ फिशिंग फ्रॉम द फिशिंग कम्युनिटी एंड फ्रॉम दम एरिया uh but what i suggest is ki uh we will first just before we go we will also like to listen to them but since we are running short on time maybe with everybody's permission we can extend the time by another 5 to 10 minutes maximum and there are some questions which have come from the uh, uh, participants maybe we can take them first and then again go back to some of the comments and others from uh, the participants so there are three questions i'll just read them out and then maybe avli and uh, maybe shivkar ji the pradeep da want to respond to them so there is one question uh, i'm sorry i'm just reading out the questions because shortage of time otherwise we would have liked the participants themselves to ask the questions uh, ashwini chitni has asked a question given that most of the major rivers have dams constructed over them is it possible to ensure a uh, water for 300 days as one of the earlier slide states which was a requirement ek sawal ye hai one question is this the other question is uh, from pratik ta himself how many fishers are there on the stretch of amba river and uh, third question was from ashok shrimali ji what type of violations of coastal zone regulation act are there so maybe uh, whoever wants to respond abhi shivkar ji pratik ta can quickly respond and then we will see if there are any more questions we'll take them otherwise we'll also ask a few people to come and please come in avli you want to start yeah um i'll i'll quickly respond to ashwini's question uh, which is there on uh, is it possible to even ensure water for 300 days as one of the earlier slide uh, slate uh, state as a requirement ashwini uh, uh, i i uh, really uh, don't have the data as such with me uh, but i don't think uh, that is possible for most rivers which is why um, the lack of water availability and uh, depth was the reason uh, why 63 of the 106 newly declared waterways are actually non viable uh, 
uh but on on specifics of uh whether or not it, it is possible i i think we'll have to get deeper into the data and get back to you uh with more uh insights um i think uh, arun shivkar ji should take the question arun shivkar ji aap uh, batayenge thoda fisher folks ke bare mein jo question hai kitne uh fishers hai uh, amba nadi par uske bare mein agar aap bataye to अभी यहाँ के करीबन 21 संस्था है हमारी मछुआरी संस्था और वो मछुआर संस्था में करीबन में अभी भी बोला था 4000 हजार मछुआरे है जो ये खाड़ी क्षेत्र में है दूसरी बात जो ऊपर के तालाब में मछुआरी करने वाले भी है लेकिन खाड़ी क्षेत्र में ये अगर आप उसका इस्तेमाल करेंगे तो ये सोचते हैं अभी ये पूरे संस्था का इकट्ठा करके हमने धर्मतर खाड़ी बचाओ कृति समिति बनाई है यानी फेडरेशन बनाए और ये दोनों तरफ के यानी खाड़ी क्षेत्र के अंबा रिवर के दोनों तरफ के जितने भी मछुआरे है संस्था है इनको इकट्ठा करके ये लोग हम लोग संगठन बनाए ताकि वो इन, इनके खिलाफ थोड़ा सा कुछ अच्छा करना चाहिए एक बात हेलो थैंक यू थैंक यू शिवकर जी मे बी हम ये जो थर्ड क्वेश्चन है अबाउट वेरी क्विकली अबाउट द वायोलेशन ऑफ कोस्टल रेगुलेशन जोन एक्ट शिमली जी एक्चुअली दे हैड टू अप्लाई फॉर अ कोस्टल सी आर जी क्लियरेंस विच इज ऑल्सो मैंशन इन द डी पी आर बट सो फार ऑन द महाराष्ट्र कोस्टल जोन रेगुलेशन जोन अथॉरिटी वी हैव एंड फाउंड एनी एप्लीकेशन रिगार्डिंग टू दैट so uh, as far as the data is available on the public in the public domain uh, we don't think they have gotten the crz uh, clearance although it is required but this is like according to the data which is available in public domain okay uh, there are no immediate questions uh, if anybody has questions please raise their hand so that we can see but meanwhile i'll request uh, nand kumar pawar ji to just intervene and just for one or two minutes please aap apni baat rakhiye kyunki hum sunna chahenge bataiye thank you sir for invitation basically i was traveling all the way from goa to mumbai i just landed just few minutes back and sorry for delay okay so basically we are talking about the waterways and impact of waterways on the coastal ecology and the impact on livelihood of the traditional fishers so definitely i would like to to talk about the jnpa port which is the largest continental terminal port in the world and what port port has done the port has been set up in the mouth of the thane creek 520 hectares of rich active fishing area has been reclaimed by jnpa and the mouth of the creek used to be 1500 meters wide has been reduced to merely 100 meter so the obvious impact you can anyone can access there is no any scientific study or uh, uh this is not rocket science that one doesn't understand the quantum of water the water supposed to come from the open sea into the creek area has been reduced drastically and its impact you see the it's not audible i know your 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 voice is breaking pawar uh, ji we are not able to hear properly i think there is some internet issue hello uh, hello i guess you switch off your video and then speak Please switch off your okay. video. Yeah, please switch off your video. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 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 We'll do that. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah, yes. yes, we can hear you. Yeah. yeah. So we have been having this battle with, uh, especially against the JN JNPA, which is the main culprit, I would say. uh because the impact really uh, matter of concern for all fishing community residing in that particular district rigid rigid district i'm talking about uh, what happens these uh, huge huge uh, fishing areas 
can you imagine the recently the jnpa has to hand it over 8 14 hectares of mangrove area to the mangrove cell why this could happen this could happen only because of the deposition of silt which generate in the process of jnpa project uh, activity because the channel they continue have to maintain in a uh, navigational status deepening widening channel is a regular process and huge amount of silt being generated and all this silt getting deposited into the breeding and spawning area of the fish when the fishing area has been lost the breeding area lost there is no possibility that fish can come and breed already mouth has been reduced to merely 100 meters and i tell you one one example how the ecology has been impacted we never had any flood in uran taluka despite if you remember 2005 we have massive flood here in mmr region 932 mm of rain despite such heavy rain there was no any flood sign in uran panvel taluka but this year alone there is only 213 mm of rain and two taluka have gone completely under water this is only because of indiscriminate landfill on low land area on the fishing area reclamation on mangroves everything has been changed and let me tell you one more thing the judicial system are getting hopeless the current reclamation we talk about the environment the crz area currently under reclamation we are talking just discussing about the issue the reclamation is still going on there at jnp airport for 110 hectares of area under reclamation continuously and this permission granted by even the judicial system there are too many things to be talk about in two three minutes is never sufficient what to tell you but we i'll tell you we have united now we have formed our union to to fight this battle and let we unite we won't get any justice because you write any number of letters to any authority there is no chain like it to happen unless you go to court nothing will change and we are doing that thank you thank you thank you nand kumar ji for that very uh, very insightful presentation i think you are right that uh, you have to unite and struggle i think that seems to be the important message coming out uh, uh, gordon patel ji will you like to speak something very briefly uh, and then we will probably have to end this Patel sir, okay. I think uh, what we will do is there is a question from Rehmat. Uh, we will. I'll just read out that question. Maybe Avli can respond to that, and then we'll see if Gordon Patel is back on the line. Then we can uh, have him. Otherwise, we'll have to end. So Rehmat is asking the question. एनजीटी और सुप्रीम कोर्ट रोक के बावजूद इस समय सरदार सरोवर बांध नर्मदा में क्रूज चलाने की कोशिश की जा रही है लगता है यह क्रूज अपेक्षा क्रूज छोटे होंगे और पर्यटन मनोरंजन के लिए इस्तेमाल होंगे इनके असर बड़े बात से किस तरह से अलग होंगे सो अगली अगर आप रेहमत भाई मेरे ख्याल से बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट सवाल है Uh, जैसा कि हम लोगों ने वीडियोस वगैरह भी देखे इसके बारे में जो आपने पोस्ट किए हैं दिस इज अ क्लियर वायलेशन ऑफ एनजीटी एंड सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑर्डर बट आई थिंक जो इम्पैक्ट्स हैं जो भोजताल में भी हुआ uh, जो लीकेज ऑफ ऑयल हुआ था जितना फ्यूल पूरे वेटलैंड में uh, हुआ था जिसकी वजह से ये एन का केस Uh, और ये ऑर्डर भी आया है आई थिंक वो इम्पैक्ट्स काफ़ी हद तक अगर डीजल या फ्यूल बेस्ड uh, uh, ही ये वेसल्स हैं तो काफ़ी सिमिलर रहेंगे सेफ्टी कंसर्न्स जो हमने अभी फिशिंग नेट्स पे डैमेज की बात की दिस कुड आल्सो बी द सेम इम्पैक्ट्स विद रिगार्ड्स टू ड्रेजिंग एट्सेट्रा कुड बी डिफरेंट इन इन स्केल बट दे आर लाइकली टू बी वेरी मच देर आई थिंक थैंक यू अभी गोर्धन पाटिल जी आप बोल पाएंगे क्या सुन पा रहे हैं क्योंकि मुझे लगता है कुछ इंटरनेट का प्रॉब्लम है 
हेलो हाय सर देयर आर सम नेटवर्क इश्यूज स्ट्रीम इन साइड सो ओके ठीक सो अनफॉर्चूनेटली देयर आर नेटवर्क इश्यूज दैट इज एंड अदरवाइज वी वुड हैव आल्सो हैड सम इनसाइट्स फ्रॉम हिम ही इज आल्सो फ्रॉम द सेम एरिया एंड ही इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द फिशिंग कोऑपरेटिव्स देयर ही इज अ चेयरपर्सन आई थिंक ऑफ द फिशिंग कोऑपरेटिव्स देयर बट आई थिंक वी हैव हर्ड अ लॉट ऑफ वॉइसेस एंड अनफॉर्चूनेटली बिकॉज वी आर रनिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ टाइम uh we are already 10 minutes past our scheduled time so we do need to end today but it has been a very very rich discussion uh and i can see very well that i think it's an issue which there is a lot of interest and a lot of concern uh, so uh, we should look at this as a start of a a process or an ongoing process and we hope that uh, you know not just manthan but other people who are also today here uh in this whole discussion we can all come together and take this process of both dialogue and protest and resistance um, ahead so that we can make some impact on that and uh, i don't really want to summarize or anything because i think the discussions have been just too rich but i just want to say um, just a couple of important points i think what we see uh, is that whether it is amba which is on the western coast of maharashtra or we see what pradeep da shared with us from kolkata and that side which is on the eastern coast we can see that the same experiences are there for the fishing community especially of the impacts of the of the navigation and uh, again what we are able to see is that uh, earlier there was smaller navigation smaller vessels the impacts were less but now with large corporates coming in with lot of big industries on the coast we are seeing uh, the whole thing expanding a lot so the impacts are going to increase i think this is one cause of concern second point i want to make uh, is from the last point which rehmat brought out which is that a lot of the focus of the uh, national inland waterways program is shifting to cruise tourism because the Uh, the cargo uh, vessels uh, are not viable in many places because of the problems of dredging which is very costly and all that uh, the cruise tourism is becoming a major thing and uh, uh, yes the cruise vessels may be slightly smaller but their impacts are equally large avli has mentioned a few of them but i think there is a deeper question that the cruise typically as you will see there lot of uh, announcements also by the government last year and uh, you know this ganga cruise where uh, uh, five star cruise and seven star cruise so the question is that slowly the river which was being used by small fisher people by small boats people that is increasingly being taken over by large corporates for large cargo or for the very rich people to come and run their cruise and uh, uh, wherever this happens the fishing people the local people will be moved out as we saw again from the amba experience that you know their channels will be protected fisher people will be asked to move out and all that so i think this is a question to which pradeep da also alluded who has the right over this water and what should be the rivers how the rivers should be used how the water body should be used i think these are very important questions which are also come out uh, which have come out from today's discussion and i think uh, these are the discussions uh, these are the questions therefore which raise a lot of concern in our mind and, and uh, i uh, i am very glad that we have had a very good participation uh, you know right now the whole country and rightfully so a lot of minds are occupied with the elections and all those issues so uh, we can understand that you know people are engaged with many other different issues at this point of time but even then a lot of people came for this webinar and that shows really how much concern people are having for this so uh, we do hope that uh, we can uh, you know take this conversation forward all of us together manthan of course will definitely try and play our role but i think that we should see it as a larger uh, collective effort and again uh, thanks to everybody who participated and of course particular thanks to uh, our speakers especially uh, arun shivkar ji and uh, pradeep da and uh, also nan kumar pawar ji who joined from the uh, you know from the uh, uh, areas where this uh, uh, navigation and all are causing problem to the fishing community and her, and to other riparian communities for sharing that uh, thanks everybody once again uh, just before ending i'll just say that we will be sharing the recording of this program to everybody who had registered for it and we will be putting this in our 
website and YouTube channel. So this will be available for later um, uh, viewing also. And uh, of course, our presentation also will be shared and uh, the report anyway is available on Manthan's website. And please do reach out to us if you need anything else. Uh, with that, I would like to end. Before that, last words, Avli, if you want to say anything or from my side. No, no. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you so much. Do read our report if you are interested to read more about this topic. We can link that again uh, when we share the recording. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And bye. Thank you.